Hi, so welcome back. After understanding the different levels of injury levels in the pest, now a one question arises. Does the pest status on a crop will remain same at all the times? Well, to certain extent it is S. This pest can be categorized into a different kinds, so based on the different parameters. Now in this class, let us look at what are the different categories of the pest that we can make. So first of all, the pest can be categorized based on their occurrence, so we can actually categorize them as the regular pest. In the sense, these pests will regularly occur on a particular crop and they will have a very close association. For example, the rice stem borer or the fruit borer in case of brinja. Whenever you grow these crops, then these pests are bound to occur. So, indicating their closer association with the crop. Some pest can be called as an occasional pest in the sense their occurrence is not quite frequent and they do not have a closer association. Say for example, the rice case worm. It means to say that we may not expect this pest to occur whenever the crop is being grown, but at the same time they may suddenly appear and may cause the economic damage. Now, some insects are referred as the seasonal pest in the sense these pests will occur during a particular season every year. The sense, so best example you can give is a one pest on groundnut or a peanut which is called as a red headed hairy caterpillar and sometimes the mango hoppers. So, whenever the groundnut is grown especially during the monsoon season, this pest will occur on this crop and then cause the damage. And some pests are referred as the persistent pests, which actually persist on the crop throughout the year and it is quite difficult to control. Like on chili, we have the chili thrips. So, the pest will occur on it and then persistently it keeps causing the damage right from germination to the harvesting period. Then fifth category that we can make is of a sporadic pest, where here the pest will occur in isolated localities during some period of time. So, best example I can give is the coconut slug caterpillar. Now, based on the level of infestation, the pest can be classified as an epidemic pest in the sense there will be a sudden outbreak of this pest which will be in a quite severe form over a larger area. So, the best example I can give is in a recent time that we had a white fly outbreak in Punjab and Haryana, so where this pest caused a real havoc on cotton. Similarly, we have a several instances where, so like for example, the sugarcane woolly aphid which was quite epidemic quite some years back in Karnataka and Maharashtra. And the second category we can make in this is the endemic pest. Here the pest occurs in a low level in certain packets, but it occurs regularly and it is confined to a particular area. For example, the rice gall midge infestation in the coastal belt of Karnataka and the Kerala, where this pest is seen only all along the coastal border and in certain pockets it regularly comes and hence such pests are named as the endemic pest. Then third categories of the pest we can make based on the economic injury level and the general equilibrium position. So, we can call the pest as a key pest and if you look at the graph here, in case of key pest or the pest which comes under this category, the general equilibrium position of this pest population will be much higher than the economic injury level. And so, we need to frequently go for the interventions or a management practices to bring this population below the economic threshold level and keep it at a particular modified GEP we call it as okay. and always such type of pests are quite severe and they cause a huge economic loss. The best example that we can give is the diamond back moth or cabbage and cauliflower. The second category is the major pest and of course, the major pest will also have the GEP which is higher than the EIL, but they will be quite close to the economic injury level and with a timely intervention for managing this pest. 
so the pest can be easily brought down below the economic threshold level. Then the third type that we can see is the minor pest or the occasional pest. In this minor or the occasional pest, if you look at the GEP will be much lower than the economic threshold level, but occasionally sometimes the population will suddenly increase and then go beyond the economic injury level wherein we need an intervention and then keep bringing it below the economic threshold level. Then we have this sporadic pest. In this sporadic pest also the GEP will be much lower than economic threshold level, but occasionally or unexpectedly the population will increase us and go beyond the economic injury level and cause the economic damage. Then we do have the potential pest where the pest population will be much much lower than the economic threshold level, but we do not know that when they become a major one and they are quite potential to become a major one and we should have a constant watch and ward over these pests. So, in this class now we learnt about the different categories of the pest based on the different factors and then understood their level of incidence and their nature of damage. Thank you.